What's up guys, my name is Casey and this is Zone for Geeks and today we're going to be installing Active Directory as well as DNS. Now in my case I'm going to be installing these on a virtual machine but you can use hardware if you want to or your own uh, virtual machine. So in order to get started we need two pieces of software. Uh, the first is going to be the Windows 2022 Server Edition and then we will need a copy of Windows 10 or 11 um, that is professional or higher. And of course, uh, earlier versions will also work, such as Windows 7 and Windows 8. Um, but I will leave links in the description to get both of those uh, pieces of software. They both come from Microsoft, so they are legitimate um, operating systems. So I'm not going to really cover how to install the operating system because it's pretty straightforward. However, if you see on the screen here, I am going to um, show you the difference between the um, standard and the desktop experience, or at least uh, explain the difference. So the desktop is going to give you the graphical user interface that you're used to with a Windows operating system, whereas the standard is pretty much through command line and PowerShell. And realistically, if you have to watch this video in order to uh, install Active Directory, then the desktop experience is probably what you want to go for. So I'm going to go ahead and get this installed, and I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, now that we have Windows Server installed as well as our Windows 10 operating system, there's just a couple of things I'm going to set up before we get started. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to set this up on a um, static IP address. So we'll come in here. And then we're just going to give this something that is easy to remember. So we're going to do .25. And then our gateway is 10.1.1. Now for our DNS, because this is going to be our DNS server, I'm actually going to set this as the home IP address. The loopback address. And then the last thing that I want to do is I want to change the name of the computer uh, because that is going to make it really simple in the future to be able to uh, remember what system does what. So we're going to go into our system and Windows has changed this up a bit. Um, I still like to do the advanced option. And then we're going to just call this SVR DC1. And then hit OK. We will have to do a restart. And I'll be right back as soon as this comes back up. Okay, so we are back and now we're going to go ahead and install our domain and uh, DNS services. So we're going to click on Manage, Add Roles and Features, Next, Next, select our server, and we're going to go ahead and do DNS, Add Feature, and then uh, Active Directory Domain Services. And then hit next. Uh, we don't need to install any additional services, so we're going to keep going. And we're going to, I don't think we're going to have to restart, but we'll go ahead and select that just in case. And depending on the speed of your system, this can take several minutes. Uh, so as soon as it's done, we'll come back. Okay, we're done installing our services, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. And then now we need to promote our um, server to a domain. So we're going to click on this little uh, warning icon or caution icon. And we're going to click on promote the server to a domain controller. We're going to add a new forest. In this case, I'm just going to call it mylab.local. Okay, now we're going to give it a password. This is if uh, we ever need to, uh, for some reason, restore your Active Directory. So we'll wait on this to catch up. We're going to not create a DNS delegation. 
And this should auto populate and we'll just leave it whatever it sets. Probably my lab. And then we're just going to go on through. Uh, we will do the installation and this will require a reboot once we're done. And as soon as our computer restarts, we'll be back. Okay, so our server has rebooted and we're going to go ahead and log in. You'll notice right here, so um, it says my lab, which means we are connecting to the my lab domain. And let's go ahead and log in. And then we're going to go ahead and create a couple of users here. Wait for our server manager to launch. We're going to click on tools and then active directory users and computers. And then right click and new user. Where's it at? Right there. All right, so let's just uh, say here, Peter Parker, and then their logon will be P Parker. Hit next. Uh, we'll set a password for them. And then we'll create one more. Oops. New user. All right, so now we have our two users created. Let's close this out. And now we're going to pull up our uh, Windows 10 machine so that we can take a look at that. So give me just a sec to get that launched up. Okay, so we have our, our Windows 10 machine launched. And let's go ahead and try to connect it to a domain. And this is actually not going to work right away. And I will show you why. Uh, so let's go here. System. Scroll down. And then change. Okay, so our domain was called mylab.local. And if I just hit OK, we should get an error message here. And we do. Um, so basically what's happening is our computer can't connect to our domain controller um, because it doesn't know where it's at. So let's uh, minimize this. Let's uh, go back into our control panel. And in order to find our um, domain, we need to set our DNS. So we're going to point our DNS to our domain controller. There you go. So we're not going to worry about the IP address, but our DNS was 10.1.1.25. And then I'm going to go ahead and set secondary um, because if we only leave it with this, we actually will not have internet access. So we're going to close that out. And now when we go back into our um, domain to add it, then we should not have any more problems. So mylab.local. All right, so our username is going to be the only um, administrator username we have is going to be administrator. So we're going to do mylab dot, oops, slash administrator and then the password. 
And once you join a computer to a domain, it does have to reboot. So you can see welcome to mylab.local. Click OK, close, and restart. And as soon as this comes back up, we'll be back. All right, so we've rebooted our Windows 10 machine. So if we try to log in, you can see go to other user. That is an option now. And at the bottom, we do have the option to do my lab. We can also obviously manually type it. And we're going to use one of our users that we just created. So P Parker. And it pulls the name from Active Directory. And then Peter Parker will have access to this computer. Um, and we can assign um, permissions or group policies based on the user or the computer itself. Uh, and that gives us control over what is going to happen to uh, on this computer as well as what this specific user can do. So that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you found it informative. Uh, go ahead and leave me a comment if you have questions or comments. Uh, hit that thumbs up and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one.